it. Magister, now speak. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Dwarf. Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help Alice. Yes, your holiness. I believe we're done here. What a waste. Come, we'll be needed elsewhere. The Lizard Magister, or what's left of her, lies in a puddle of gore. She was a lizard, yet a Magister. No matter her reasons, her penalty was fair. These creatures are so prone to violence, naturally, the weaker specimens suffer. Told him at noon exactly. Come on, then, Lexi. There you are. Did you see them, sir? Bishop Alexander and the hammer herself. They they, they were so close, almost within arm's reach. A traitor cannot be murdered. A traitor can only receive their due. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day. Easy enough to say in times of peace, but look around. We're standing on the edge of the end. 
The Void Woken are coming, sir. And it's only the Divine Order. <coughs> I've got my eye on you, Halfstack. Don't try any of that sauce business on my watch, or I'll do to you what the hammer did to that traitor. reality. A fella can't hear himself think with all this racket. Day and night she hollers after that child. You hear that, Farah? You got to cut that out. What's happened to you? Aye, she needs help, but none that I can give. Mad as a cooker, that one, and twice as loud. Distraught, don't even begin to cover it. She's hollering after that child of hers, killed by a void woken she was. Been dead and buried for a month now. Never even stepped foot in Fort Joy. And there ain't no amount of hollering that'll bring her back. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day. Move aside, dwarf. Move aside. I need to find my little girl. I need to find my baby. She was... she was here. I, I'm sick with worry. Completely sick. And no one in this damn camp will lift a finger to help me find her. They haven't changed a bit. This place turns people cold. Cold and wicked. That fellow Jeth over there speaks unutterable evil, but I can't move away from him. What if Irma comes back and I'm not here? Yes, of course. Here, you should take it with you. When you find her, give her the doll and tell her. Mummy says this is for her little chicken. She soaks up a steady stream of tea. She ought to come with you then. She ought to follow you back to me. You are an angel. Um, uh, Mummy's right here. Where are you? She's gone, Farah. Gone! Didn't I? I'm not mad, darling. I'm not mad. Sweetheart? Pipe down, Farah. It's time to accept reality. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day. Um, uh, Mummy's right here. Where are you? Pipe down, Farah. It's time to accept reality. Come on, old man. I can't wait all day. Pipe down, Farah. It's time to accept reality. teach this beast he must respect if not he comes for you next respect huh someone's got to keep this place running 
Griff can't do it for free. Why'd you gotta make it so hard? An intense looking man steps between the thug and the elf and rolls up his sleeves, revealing well muscled and heavily scarred arms. You recognize him. It's Ifan, who you met aboard the ship on the way here. Just stand aside, won't you, mate? This is no business of yours. Lone wolves decide their own business. The thug freezes in fear for a moment before shuffling back to the Buy up, elf. No one shorts Griff, especially not one of you. Burrow looks you both up and down, sizing up your comp Ah, get out of here. The both of you. You ain't worth it. The elf smiles and bows to you in Follow me before more of them trouble us. There is a safe place. Is that indigestion or is it... State your business. Certainly. You may not be a lizard, but your kind are hardly so bad as the humans. If it's trade you're looking for, I've made a habit of procuring items that can prove rather useful inside these walls. That's for you to decide. tells me there are so many children in this Fort Joy. Magisters I handle, but small ones. Well, not your kind of small. You understand.
stay in this cave a while longer. Provoke Modi, the wild one who runs like his clothes catch fire. I feel him, but I do not see him. Got you! The young girl's eyes are covered, but she turns towards you when you approach. She smiles as though she recognizes you, though she couldn't have seen your face. Ah, hello. I see you come a long way. I see you come here seeking a great adventure. Do you find it? I see it before my eyes. <laughs> it is not so bad. I know which days have bread and which days have none. I know more bread comes someday. It helps. Your life is not your own. Your life is for us all. I cannot say more. You see someday. Her eyebrows shoot up. There can be a way. Amiro knows. But he is gone. Do you see him? He knows my protector, my friend. An elf like me, with a spirit bright as new leaves. He tries to help. He is caught by those who hurt him. I wish so much for his return. And he tells you what you seek. A way out. You bring me great peace. Thank you, my friend. I miss him. I see something that helps. I see a lizard. He is a lizard of many dreams, of far feeling. You do not free Amiro with a... The child ignores you and continues with her game. I'm playing Helen, hero of the whole world. That was my mum's name. She died when the void went and came. Suddenly, the child's face crinkles into a grimace. She seems on the verge of sobbing when her face suddenly goes still and blank. She smiles at you and... I'm Helen, hero of the whole world. Whack! Back, evil ogre, or I'll get you with my sword! I'll spare you this time, beast, but don't cross me again. You're really fun. Hey, I'm gonna hide somewhere in the cave, and you come find me. Ready? Introduce it's hmm. my way is too small for you. You'll have to find another. Hope you brought a shovel. I've spotted something.
Thank you for your help with that, thug. Humans hate us both the same here. This is so strange. She bows. no escapes. The only way out is through. Through the Magisters, through their cure. Thugs, I can stand, but oh, I fear the Magisters. In this cave, we trust Sahela. She is young, but she sees. She knows more than we know. In the camp, the brute Griff rules. He who gives the bread has the power. It gives me great pain. I'm with my family. We are making beautiful magic. We are healing a tree cut down with great violence. The Magisters come. My family runs, but I fall. My son looks back. I shout to him to run. Wait, before you go. I am not here without your help. I do not forget this. For you, a prize. I save it for a special occasion, but I can think of no- Thank you.
I feel him, but I do not see him. back and you brought but but who is this <clears throat> I'm good sir you have set my body free free to crumble to dust at last but my spirit Last! I remain trapped in this moldering spell, most terrible. I have heard of such magic, but have never known anyone so foul as to employ it. Bracchus Rex, after he interred me in this cell, he must have drawn my very soul away from me and stored it elsewhere in the fort. But I know this place well. I could lead you to its likely location. In turn, you would find a path straight out of this fort. My freedom for yours. What say you? Marvelous, my friend. Marvelous. You'll first have to get inside the fort itself. There's a secret switch on a statue of the Seven in the courtyard. Surely you know it. The switch will open a hatch, and you'll be led into the prison's main floor. I suspect that within Bracchus' phylactery room, you will find the container which ensnares my... Bracchus would have made me a supplicant, a slave to these walls. With your help, I'll die. I was fully briefed about this awful place before I came. My goal was to destroy the fiend who had been marshalling the world's most unwholesome weapons and magic into an army he intended to use against the realm. I never thought I would become one of his victims. And yet, here I am. Fort Joy is a dangerous place, my friend. Dangerous indeed. Bracchus used this place to build an arsenal of terror. Here, he and his researchers crafted punishments and snares contrary to human dignity. Objects that could contain souls. Ones that could purge the very essence from sorcerers. Treasure.
I feel uneasy here. I feel uneasy here. The soldier stands to attention. The old dog whimpers sadly, sniffing your... Amid the squalor of Fort Joy, you suddenly spot an elf with diamond features, regal and radiant, but cold too, and sharper than any knife. She was the one who sat rolling dice in the ship that went under, deciding fates with every roll. 
or so she said. Her eyes are focused on a lizard some distance away, and you get the distinct feeling he's an unfortunate man indeed to be trapped in her tiger-like gaze. No sooner have these words left your mouth than she turns about and grabs you in a stranglehold. You feel the tip of a long knee. You caught me off guard. No one catches me off guard. Better tell me who you really are, or this time I'll let my needle do the licking. But you did, and now the tables have turned. You look quite startled to me. A push, a pivot, and now you suddenly face her. The needle still all too deep. Despite the precariousness of your situation, you notice something that remained undetected in the gloom of the ship. A flaw in her diamond features. A curiously shaped scar on her left cheek. Let me tell you that once upon a bad old time, a lizard cut this thing, this living scar into my cheek. The mark of us, but now I'm free, of sorts. And I've traced that lizard here. I intend to raise the subject with him. <laughs> she drives the needle in deeper and whispers. In truth, it does not matter in the least who you really are. You saw me mark my prey. You could warn him, save him, or kill him before I... That makes you a liability. That makes you needle feed. A bright sparkle of laughter follows your proposal. Ha! <laughs> How amusing. I admit I had not seen that twist coming. I was certain the pitiful begging was about to begin. Make your case and do it quickly. Why should I join you? Escape. <laughs> How you do tickle me. Most of the misguided deers around here would argue such a thing is impossible. <laughs> well played. Oh, little needle mine, what should I do? Push? You know what? Today is a rather fine day. Sunshine and an easy breeze. Yes, I'll let you live. I'll even agree to travel with you, provided... I'm not quite sure the weather will save him. With a casual flick of the wrist, she withdraws the needle from your neck and smiles, as if she just invited you to sit down for tea. Let's discuss our respective roles, then, shall we? You, me, and Death will be playing many a round of hide-and-seek. So, what role would you like me to play? As a rogue, my speciality is stealth. The quick silence of the dagger striking unseen. That said, I'm perfectly lethal wielding any weapon or magic. So, the choice is yours. My grace and finesse could make a cat's fur go green with envy. Go on, give me the details. Fine. Lead on. Or better yet, let them follow me. You're not quite certain you'll ever sleep soundly with Seville in any sort of proximity, but at least she's on your side for the moment.
As you approach the blacksmith, you feel a bony hand on your arm. Fane leans in and whispers in your ear. If it would be acceptable, I have an inquiry for this human. And if it would not be acceptable, well, that would render this entire conversation rather awkward. Fane approaches the blacksmith and quietly speaks to her. You can't overhear much, but he seems to be gesturing towards her head an awful lot. Fane's words are quiet, but you hear the blacksmith repeat, Face Ripper, in shock. She slowly starts to back away. What is it with creeps like you and Master Niles? I told him to slither back to his dungeon, and you can get too, freak! Fane backs away, scratching his head. It seems that didn't go as he'd expected. He is lost in thought, though. She must have said something he found interesting. Amidst a crowd of screws, bolts, and scraps of metal, the woman is manipulating a glove-like... And what you after? Looking to buy? This? This belongs to Dallas. Oh, the Hammer, as you might have heard her moniker. <laughs> I'm just having a tinker with it. You sure you're not looking to buy anything?
You're kind of getting too big for your boots, you know? Bloody cavies. Ought to keep out of our air if you don't want to pay for the pleasure. This time, mate. I saw what you did there. Convincing Burrow not to lay down the law on that elf. Anything for a fellow sorcerer, isn't that right? Bifan rolls his sleeves back down. He nods at you, the shadow of a smile on his lips. Good work there. Good work. I can tell you've got chops. Say. He stretches out one rough hand to shake yours. He grips your hand tight as a vice and shakes it. Ha Say, you don't look all that busy now that we're safely on dry land. I could use someone to watch my back. And it looks like you could you. I've just got a small errand to run. And then I'll be looking to get the hell out of here while I've still got a neck to collar. How about we stick together until we get out of this place? He shrugs, looking off to the sun. Mercenaries. It's a job. My job. Everyone needs to make a living. I make mine running errands. That's the truth. For me, for you. For Why not help each other get out of here? The usual way. Haphazard, terrifying, and drenched in blood. Haven't quite worked out the details yet, but I'll wager it'll be no worse than what'll happen. Two heads are better than one, and when push comes to shove... He grins, sharp teeth glittering in the midday sun. So, before we hit the road, it's best if we decide battle strategies up front. Survival's my main priority. I'll use every trick in the book to keep us alive. But if a wayfarer is not what you're after, I've got other skills. What do you need? Can do. He scans the horizon for threats with one green eye. Looks like you've got quite a busy little crew already. My instincts tell me to travel with a smaller pack. But if you happen to lose one... Stay down, you! I know you. Losa, the dark-eyed jokester you met aboard the ship, waves enthusiastically. Back then, I was... <coughs> Mudder, you. <laughs> Glad to see you made it. Nothing like a nice tentacle slap across the moor to set the tone for the week, eh? How'd you escape? Me too. Did you hear something? When you were in the water, I mean. I heard the same thing. Do you know what this means? It means... Losa's voice catches in her throat. The joy drains from her face. Her eyes lose focus and her whole body goes rich. She is stock still, waxy skinned, her eyes dark. Grayish black veins run from her eyes down her cheeks. Her head snaps to you mechanically and her eyes lock with yours. Dark pupils dilated into great black voids. Light suddenly flashes back into her face. The gray veins drain to pinkish flesh, and her whole body... Re anyway, what were we talking about? Ah, oh, it's nothing really. It's just, I'm just a bit, well, a bit hospitable. Put it like this. You've never been a host, I bet. That's because you're an infested clump of leaves on the side of the road. That ain't bad, though. I'd give just about anything to be like you. But I'm a... a roadside inn. Red door, flowers out front, friendly lady at the door beckoning you in for half price. Like a god's damn gold star inn for the disembodied. Now, isn't that just the question of the hour? I can't be sure just yet. I'll be surprised if it's a demon. 
Definitely not a sprite either. Maybe a spectre. But so, how are you enjoying the joy? Yeah, same story here. Reckon in my case, they might actually be... So, you want to check this place out together? Strength in numbers and all that. It does, right? Before we head out, I've got more than a few tricks up. Lately, I've been into the enchanting arts, but I can shoot, slash, summon, steal, whatever your little black heart desires. So, what'll it be? Sounds fine. Yeah? Hey, wait a sec. It looks till then. Bow your head, please. If we chant the endless prayer, the next divine will ascend. Is that Even if your kind has displeased oh God. the gods so terribly of late. <laughs> Haven't you heard? Bishop Alexander, the divine's own son, is Godwoken. He will ascend. He will pray. Do not doubt that he will come into his path. Greetings, child. Rather far from home, you and I, enduring such dark times. No disrespect, eh? I'm used to calling all the Divine's offspring that way. Looky, looky here, mates. A fresh face. We love fresh faces, don't we? <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Why don't you join us in a round of cards? First hands on the house. No problem, Freshy. In that case, enjoy your stay. But I'll be needing to collect your interment fee first, of course. I'm sure the Reds told you. No one gets along without paying the interment fee. So, let's make this easy. Empty your pockets. Are you really going to make this so hard, Freshie? Go on, then. Whatever pennies you've got in your pocket ain't worth my breath. Huh? What are you doing here? Didn't Griff already take one of them years of yours? Somehow, I don't think that'll take too long. Welcome to Fort Joy, brother. Coming from our lands, are you? Or were you already set up in the guards help you? These pla
that's it. I call court. Pay up. The woman is scrabbling at her throat, as though she can hardly breathe. Don't touch me. You're too close. This collar, this place, it's squeezing the life from... Do you? You seem fine. Don't you feel how tight this collar is? And there's nothing we can do. Her hands move again to her throat. Come on, chap. Don't be unreasonable. Better even to puke yourself to death. So avoid Wilkins, I don't care. It's too tight. just arrived, isn't that right? Are you... Are you quite alone? It's just... I have a proposition. Something... Something very worth knowing. But it's... In that case, listen up. You must think me mad to approach a stranger, but this camp is full of cowards and I'm running out of time. Fast. Too fast. Way too fast. I've been here a long time. Longer than anyone else. People get taken sometimes. Some folks say they get cured. I don't know if I believe it. And I don't want to wait and find... I have a way out of here. It won't be easy and I need a partner. Just one. Are you interested? Believe whatever you want. This may be your only chance at leaving this place. Take it or don't. Oh, noble. But after the magisters take you all, your nobility will have been for nothing. Good luck with your friends. It's time to accept reality. Fort Joy. What a crumbling disaster. Hey, shortbread. What you heard about a crate of stolen supplies? And don't you lie to me now. Huh. What do I need your help for, freshie? By the looks of you, you couldn't find a bush in a br- If you're done wasting my time. Heading into the kitchen? Don't try anything funny around Griff. I'm watching you. Ha! Cheeky! What's your name? Right, Slick. I haven't seen you around here before. When did you get in? All right, all right, easy now. You seem sweet, but I'm more curious about you than a bunch of cheesy lines. She sighs. <laughs> Another one of those. Anyway, I was serious before. I work for Griff, so don't try anything funny if you're heading inside. Move along. Careful. Don't want to catch Griff in a bad mood.
Come on. You know this one, don't you? Grab a bar. Hey, oh. oh, a right disgrace you are. Oh, ten bottles of mead. Oh. The lizard's brow knits together, then apart, and back again. He seems to be swimming deep in his thoughts and doesn't look up as you approach. Make the hinges rust. Hmm? What? Oh, new, are you? Very good, very good. Make yourself at home. Advice? Hmm. Hold on to yourself, my friend. The fort is full of decent folks turned savage by confinement. Do not let it happen to you.